and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining me on such a special day as today. The day after I got my F3 pen, I got my delivery from Italy. This is from a pen maker I haven't seen before, and Mr. Sizemore says about time. DHL delivered to me relatively quickly once it left Italy. It took less than five days to arrive. I suppose it arrived yesterday, but it didn't. But it did arrive today, and I did sign for it in a COVID-friendly way. You could probably tell from the tape that's liberally applied to this package that it's from a Leonardo Aficiona Italia. So we're going to open this up and see what prompted me to finally buy a Leonardo pen. Hopefully, you'll agree with my choice and the reasons for it. It's nice that the tape has a great little saying on it. More than 45 years of experience from father to son, and the story goes on. Excellent. So when we open up the package, the first thing we see is this beautiful box. And the design on the box should be a giveaway as to what the pen is. As the theme has continued on through to this box, very good at their labeling and branding. The sleeve slides off, and we'll see another sleeve, nicely engraved with the name. And this opens up, and we see a box. Yes, it's uh, the fake leatherette. We're looking for any identification and we don't see anything. So we're going to open this up for the first time, you and I together. We see another nice booklet and of course the pen. Very securely held in and we have a bottle of Leonardo ink. It's black. Pen is in a nice cellophane sleeve. We're going to extract it. And we're going to go, wow. It's uh, the blue version of the mosaic. There were a couple choices of color. Nice tag. The pen has some decent weight to it. Let's look at one of the reasons why I bought it, besides it's beautiful. One turn to get off. And we have a new steel flexible nib. The lighting's a little strange, but we'll get into it in a little bit. Fit and finish are excellent, as expected. And this has a different section on it, which is another reason why I ended up buying it. So there's three reasons. Mosaic, nib, and section. And as we expect, it does post fairly well. So let's explore this pen and see if it was worth what I paid for it. I think we need to look at this booklet a little bit more closely. A lot of thought and effort went into it. And it's certainly specific for the pen that I have, which is also very nice. We get a little introduction, a little bit of the history, the family business, the relationship to Delta. And here's a very good description of the pen, the material, it's just uh, good to read about what they did and why they did it. An Italian on the other page. Here's some of the principles involved. Some more of a description on the history and background and legacy. The three models of the mosaic. All very nice, all very interesting. What to do with the piston filler. Nice important note there. 
and the international warranty, which also is done very well, covers both their responsibility and the owner's responsibility. And following up with a nice statement about the values of the company. Nice to see. Mr. Sizemore says, we need to look at this pen more closely. I wish I had four eyes too. The more I look at this resin, the more the details just come out to me. Each of those little layers has its own set of properties. You know, some glitter, some chatoyancy, some transparency. That cap band is very nice. And the pen is identified. And you have a unique number. This is 659. The three cap bands are also done very nice. It's, it's just a well done pen. Nice design in that large cap band. And going to the barrel, we continue to admire and enjoy that amazing amount of differences to that resin. And I'm extremely happy to be able to get a mosaic. When I first saw these on the web, I go, wow, I'd like to get one. I tried local pen suppliers and they all seem to sell out very, very quickly. My guess is there wasn't many available. So when Leonardo started selling them, I immediately went on, ordered it. And as usual, the other thing that's nice is that you get to see that resin through the section. So it's the same resin used throughout the pen. And I have to admit that I'm intrigued with this nib. Can't wait to put some ink on there and see how it puts it on paper. Hopefully you're enjoying this as much as I am. A couple design elements that I think are worth mentioning. The cap is stepped so the difference in diameter between the very end of the cap and the barrel is minimized. Let's unscrew the barrel so you can see that a little bit closer. That's a very nice little detail that they did there that just kind of takes that pen from being a regular pen to an interesting very nice pen. A pen that the designers really did their extra effort to go that extra mile and to put in some details which are very much appreciated. On another note, this piston makes a slight noise when you turn it. It has kind of a rough feel to it, but I'm certain it'll work fine. Let's be very quiet and see if we can hear that piston. It looks like the piston pieces are all made out of metal. It could kind of be aluminum, which is probably not what I would have made them out of, but you need a tool to remove the piston for cleaning. And there's that slot there on one side, slot on the other, so I'm assuming it's some kind of tool that fits in there with some two legs that'll go there so you can unscrew that. I'm not in the mood, will I, nor will I do that. And the instructions are very clear. You're not to remove the section or the nib or anything else. So when I ink it up, I'm just going to ink it up. I will do a couple fills to flush everything with ink, but that's all I'll do. I have an ink in mind. Something that I think will work with this Italian pen very nicely. So, you know, we had to bring in the LED exam light on this amazing pen. I just enjoy the way light plays on a resin with all these colors and dimensions to it. Just makes life interesting on all levels. So one of the things that I enjoy about this design is some of those chunks are somewhat transparent. So if we're very good and I can keep my hands in the right spot. As we turn the piston, you can see it come down. So you're going to be able to see the ink level, which I think is going to be good, because there is no ink window. So therefore, 
you're going to need to be able to see through the resin and that works well there's that piston moving the LED has done well but let's see how it looks inside the cap and here you can definitely see how some of those chunks are completely opaque and some of them are various degrees of transparency I love the variety and if we look inside the cap we'll see that machined ledge looks like it's going to seal up very very well I expect that nib to right first time every time for a long time so here's some pens to compare it to since they reference their delta roots i thought i would show you the delta oro which has the rollerball clip on it and this is one of those unique pens that they did representing a certain indigenous species the mosaic which is definitely a large pen it makes the m800 look small and of course some metropolitan for reference so here they are posted and these probably aren't pens that i would normally post at least these three the m800 is a postable pen i think it's interesting to see the size of these nibs and how they work these in, all these have completely different sections on all of these this is that fusion nib say no more 18 karat white gold to go with the sterling silver trim on the Adivasi Delta and of course the mosaic let's zoom a little bit in on the section of nibs because I think it's interesting to look at those well certainly a great variety of nibs in this selection and hopefully you can appreciate how these sections are all different you know and maybe one of these pens might appeal to you or look similar to you but this is why they're here as a point of reference for you so i thought we'd a little bit closer look at these deltas that i'm putting in comparison to the leonardo the adivasi has a sterling silver trim on it which was very common with some of the deltas this dulce vita has a sterling silver cap band there these two bands are both sterling and they're marked accordingly when when i talked to them when I first saw the mosaic, I thought of the Adivasi because of the layers of resin that was used, and those colors were chose to represent the colors that were associated with the individual tribe that was represented by the pen. And I also brought this in to seal the rollerball clip. You can see how Leonardo has changed it a little bit, made it their own. I enjoy all of these pens. I'm very happy to own them. If you'd like to know more about my Delta pens, I have a Delta pen playlist. I'll put a link in the video description. Well, I think from this comparison, definitely the Memento Zero Grande is an oversized pen. Here's an M800, which certainly looks small compared to the Grande. And here's a Centini Libra for perspective. It's a little shorter but still a substantial good size pen here's an f3 which is also a pretty big size pen it's certainly the longest of this group and for a relative comparison a pilot metropolitan which is like half the size of these other pens i do like these four pens quite a bit but obviously the m800 is not a pen that's been in daily rotation for a while it was an everyday carry for about a year and then I thought I may have lost it. It fell out of my pocket in a parking lot. I found it, and then it no longer became a daily carry for me. Here we are looking at the nibs and sections. The Momento Zio Grande definitely has the thickest section of this group. It's also a decent length, but the Santini is longer, and the F3 is the longest, and the M800 is the shortest. The Pilot Metropolitan is just in here for reference for those of you that may have held one of these pens in their hand. The Santini has a beautiful 18 karat gold flex nib, 18 karat nib on the M800. Of course I got the Momento Zero with a steel nib. I could have got a gold nib but then that would have raised the price significantly. And the F3 also has a steel nib in it. I think we'll do a shootout comparison between the Leonardo and the Santini because I think that's 
a good comparison to Italian pens in the 300 plus dollar price range and I may throw in the F3 as an American made custom pen into that comparison. This is the ink I'm going to use. I have a very large bottle of it and I decant it into this nice ink bottle courtesy of Pen BBS, the year of the rat pen. Since I have two of those, I have an extra bottle and I use it regularly. I'm very impressed with the crystal glass and I try to keep it as clean as possible, but nah, as clean as it's going to be. I filled the pen up. So I want to show with this LED where you can see the ink level. No ink, no ink, ink. And there's a, another clear piece down here, but the ink is blocking it from coming through like it does above. So you can see the ink level, but you need a strong light. So you may ask, what was the real reason you bought the Leonardo mosaic and I'll say because I love this mosaic look stacked resin they call it spaghetti resin someday I hope to get a dual fold model with this resin Owaski has one I did go to the Commonwealth Pen Show hoping to find one but maybe I'll be motivated to go to DC and I'm certain I can find one there so we're going to look at these pens a little bit closer and see why I am attracted to this resin. Oh no, here comes even a nicer looking pen that has really attracted my attention and maybe <laughs> superseded my love of this check pattern, but those are much harder to come by. So from left to right, we have the first one that I got a while ago. Moonman M600 in this green check. Then Hidden Path, a Pen BBS check resin, which I have a 480, but the 456 has a flat end, which I want to compare to the ends of the Leonardo. Here are two Jinhao 100s. This one's a was given to me by a great viewer Dean, great artist. And this one I bought, a blue one. And here is just a very strange pen which has that similar blue resin in it but is is a different format so all of these have some nuances in them which I think are very nice let's compare a couple of these up even closer so here are two in the blue family but there's certainly a very distinct difference in the resin that Leonardo used versus the resin that's in this Jinhao 100, which is also very similar to the checkerboard resin that's in the other pens that I have. Uh, both of them have their attraction, but I have to admit that the Leonardo has definitely done a great job with this pattern in this phenomenal pen. So if you look at the end, comparing the Pen BBS 456 to the Leonardo, you'll see how the pattern is created a little bit differently. The way those layers are put together and then machined, but it's just a great look. And one of the things that I like about it is it just constantly changes as the pen moves and turns as you look at it in your hand. And that to me adds another level of interest, another level of variety. The other thing we can do with these two pens is compare that palladium to chrome. I certainly do like it. It's a slightly less shiny, I guess that's the word I would use, and it also has a little bit of a darker tone to it. I just love it, and I think it really works well with the Leonardo mosaic in blue. So here's a look at the three blue ones. The Kai Glue one here on the bottom is certainly different than the resin that Jin Hao used. In fact, I think it's kind of unique to Kai Glue. A lot more variety of colors in it. Not as much transparency, but you can compare it to the 
Leonardo, which I think is a good combination of colors between these two, kind of blends them together, because it does have some browns in addition to the blues. It also has a little bit more glitter than the other resins. Feast your eyes, I certainly am. So this is a nice nib, at least it looks that way. They put an F for fine on the side, which is good. But I've had my challenges writing with this nib. One of the reasons might be, look at the distance between the end of the nib and the feed. And the other thing that is evident is there's a big slit there. The two tines are separated by quite a bit. So that's a long distance for ink to move before it gets to the end of the nib. Trying to vary the light so you can see it properly. So the challenge I've had, which now has been with two inks, as long as this is very saturated with ink, the feed and the, and the nib and everything, it'll write, I'd say, approximately 20 to 30 words, average size words, and then it just stops writing and it will not start again. I can use the piston to push ink through, reprime the feed and the nib, and it'll write again for another 20 or 30 words before it stops writing. So that's my challenge. Before I uh, reach out to Leonardo, I'm going to use their ink because the two inks I've used so far have not worked well, but I have uh, don't have good feelings on this nib being an everyday writer. So for comparison, here's a Franklin Christoph Yovo nib. And as we turn them around, we'll see the feeds look identical, at least from this side. I've heard that Leonardo has increased flow to some of these nibs by uh, increasing the channel in the feed, but you'll see the amazing difference between the end of the feed and the end of the nib. The Leonardo is quite a long distance compared to the other Yovo nib that's in this Franklin Kristoff. I think we just need to make one more comparison. Speaking of German nibs, here's a Bach nib in my Keras Customs. And one of the reasons, one of the ways you can tell the difference is the feeds are definitely different in the Bach nibs. Very different design, even has a different texture on it. Might be made from a different material, who knows. But one of the things it does share in common is that distance between the end of the feed and the end of the nib is about the same, a little bit longer than the one on the Franklin Christoph, but certainly much shorter than the one on the Leonardo. I reached out to Leonardo, customer service, about the challenges I was having writing with the elastic nib. They responded very quickly and said they would send me a fine nib to replace it. And they said you could just pull out the elastic nib. It's not an unscrew assembly, so I did not try to unscrew it. But it pulled out relatively easily, and I think that was because of all the cleanings that I did after the ink changes that I did. So one of the things that I first wanted to do is see if the elastic nib is the same size as a regular Yovo number 6. And it is. Same length, same width. So the fact that the elastic nib was set so much higher in the feed leads me to believe that we could reassemble it and adjust it. I have this feed in a collar so I can keep it separated from the Leonardo feed, assuming there's any differences between them. And it doesn't appear that there is. To me, these Yovo feeds are just incredibly complex. That ink channel seems to be very narrow. I'll do some cleaning out of that channel just to make certain there's nothing in it. But the pen did write very wet when it was writing, which has me concerned that when I reassemble it and hopefully have that feed closer to the end of the nib, it might be even wetter, but we'll just have to see. As much as I look at these and figure out how they may work, it always sometimes surprises me when I actually ink it up and put nib to paper. So once I was able to pull the nib and feed, and you can see it is a little bit keyed there, so it's only going to fit in one spot. 
now I can use this syringe to go in through that same hole that brings ink to the feed so I could use this to flush out the inside of the piston filler rather than using the piston to force it in and out water. So that'll be my cleaning method moving forward when I change inks. The other concern I had was that slit seemed to be open a lot. So here it is outside the feed, so the feed is not pushing those tines apart. And we use the LED light, and we can see that slit is still pretty wide. It comes together at the end. I don't know. Let's reassemble, ink it up, and write. Well, I have good news. The pen is now writing consistently. I was able to finish my letter to Wasky Squirrel when I tried to do it with the elastic nib that I reseated. It would still stop after a few sentences. So I decided that I would replace that nib with this Yovo Franklin Kristoff 1.1 millimeter stub and I also use the feed that was with that nib. And this nib will now write page after page and doesn't stop. And I have that same Birmingham copper chloride ink, so it's certainly not the ink. And I'm writing on rhodia paper, not the paper. So replacing the nib and feed did correct that problem that I had with the elastic nib. And looking at my close-up video, it looked like that feed for the elastic nib may have had some blockage in it so I've worked on that cleaned it out you know we might go through some experiments because I don't know whether it was the nib that made the change or the feed since I changed both we can't go back and reevaluate so now let's see how this 1.1 millimeter stub writes in this Leonardo pen I had to take advantage of some nice strong sunlight coming in and as we can look at this mosaic resin under some different type of light I think it pops even more under th nice sunlight not something I would store it in but it certainly does increase the eye candy appeal of this I think amazing resin but we need to write with the pen so now we've come to that time in the video where I'm comfortable having some editorial comments and showing you how that new nib I put in there writes. So overall, I'm extremely happy with this pen. You may say, how could you be happy with it when the original nib wasn't writing well? And I'll say it's the world of fountain pens. Occasionally that happens. It's not relative to how much money you spend on the pen. But one of the differences is, is when you invest in a pen like this, it has nice customer service. I haven't received my uh, fine nib, but I'm certain it will show up eventually, and I'll pop it in here and see how it writes. The cap comes off in a little over one and a quarter turns, which is very, very nice. We'll give you the dimensions of the pen. It feels extremely good in the hand. I love that nice big section. We give the dimensions of the section. Threads don't bother you. That step up is smooth, so you can hold it anywhere. But with that big nib, you know, I'm about an inch away from the paper is my optimal distance. And it does post relatively deeply and pretty secure. It does change the balance but not significantly I wouldn't say posting adds to the writing experience and I generally do not post my pens so now I think it's time to put down some copper chloride ink with this nib
this nib writes well. It'll consistently write this way for long writing sessions, which is good. I think the nib is fairly good. If I was to rate this nib, I would give it a 7 out of 10. Why just a 7? Because it has a little bit of tooth on the upstroke. Downstrokes are smooth. It is sensitive to angle, but that's typical of a stub. So now this pen has become an everyday writer, which is what I'd hoped it to be when I first got it. So this is going to be a difficult pen to rate. So I'm going to give it a 9.8. You're asking why I didn't get a 10? Well, I couldn't give it a 10 with that nib that came with it. It gets two checks for being an absolutely stunning looker. It gets two checks for being extremely well made. Piston works great. It is easy to swap nibs. You just pull them out. It's a Yovo number six, so you can put in a whole bunch of nibs if you don't like the one it comes with, but obviously it's nice to get one that has the logo from Leonardo on it. So this has been a long video. I had to explore a lot with this pen, so hopefully you've stuck with me. Thank you very much, and thank you for watching. I think you can hear that nib on paper. I hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying your pens. Maybe a pen like this is in your future, or maybe you already have one. Let me know. We reach the end. And we're going to say bye. I got some great pens in the mail, so I have a lot of content to film. Stay tuned.